You know what's never good in life? Having regrets. You don't want to become an old man or a woman and look back and go, ah, oh, I never should have done that. Especially because that moment may have even shaped you as the individual you are today. Experiences are good, both good ones and bad ones too. However, there must be some football players out there that remember they joined certain clubs, look in the mirror, slap themselves around and go, yeah, I shouldn't have done that. My name is Simon Miller, this is What Culture Football, and I'm about to give you 10 Arsenal players that probably regret joining the club. Number 10, Lukas Fabianski. Despite Arsene Wenger being quoted in 2010 saying that he believed one day Fabianski could be the number one at Arsenal, well, that never happened, and in the seven seasons he spent at the club, he was always basically number two. The Polish goalie's talents were never in question, but he made so many mistakes at the start of his Arsenal career that Wenger lost all faith in him, and after that, he never really got into the first team unless injuries forced him into the first team. In 2014, though, all of a sudden Fabianski came out of his shell by saving two penalties in that FA Cup semi-final against Wigan, and it was like, all of a sudden, he was like, oh yeah, I am a good goalkeeper, and that's when he left Arsenal to join Swansea. He went on to have four pretty good seasons at the Liberty Stadium until they were relegated last year, and now he's moved on to West Ham. So you have to assume at one point or another he's looked back and gone, that Arsenal thing did not go the way I planned and really took a big chunk out of my career. At least he's doing all right now though. Number nine, Danielson. Once upon a time, Danielson was meant to be the next big Brazilian thing. He was kicking ass at Sao Paulo, and because of that, he decided to make the glitzy and glamorous move to North London and join Arsenal. Fortunately, he wasn't quite ready for the Premier League. When he did move to the club in 2006, it did all seem like a little bit too much too soon. And after a few awful performances, Arsene Wenger lost faith in the man, and that was that. And also now, today, talking right here, the Nilsson's probably wasted his potential completely as he spent most of his career in the UAE. Going back to the gun as he only managed to have regular starts in the 2008-2009 season. But then what happened? That's right, Jack Wilshere came along and he pushed Danielson out the way again. He eventually was loaned back to Sao Paulo before they bought him outright completely. And let me tell you this, he never even achieved one Brazilian cap. I think that kind of sums it all up. Number eight, Lucas Podolski. No one will ever dispute the fact that Lucas Podolski is a very talented football player, but his time at Arsenal, he was solid at best, especially because his goal was to help bring trophies back to the club and that never really happened. Podolski wasn't exactly a dramatic flop at the Emirates, but only 31 goals across three seasons didn't exactly set the world on fire. It didn't help that Podolski was forced to play down the left wing, and even though he did make it as a substitute to Germany's World Cup 2014 team, well, he only came off the bench twice. You've got to imagine if his club form was better, he would have had more starts. A January 2015 low move to Inter Milan was the end, and eventually he moved to Turkish club Glasatasaray. And there, he scored 34 goals in two seasons. So three more than he did at Arsenal in one less season. That's the maths. Number seven, Sebastian Squali. After a pair of solid seasons at Sevilla, Squali decided to make the move to North London, and now he probably really regrets it. Arsenal parted with around £4.5 million for Squali. At the time, that seemed very reasonable. The Gunners needed someone to come in and solid up their squeaky defence that had cost them in the 2009-2010 season, and this should have been the guy to do it. Initially paired with other new signing, Lauren Koscielny, Skowali instantly started to make mistakes, and then when Per Mertesacker was brought in, he basically vanished from existence. Before long, he was only being used as substitute in League Cup games before he was sold in 2014 to Bestia. And to be fair there, he did a lot better, but when you suck so bad at someone like Arsenal, once again, you're not going to feel good about it. Number six, Samir Nasri. Samir Nasri won two Premier League titles and a League Cup in his time at Manchester City, which probably left him thinking I should have left Arsenal sooner. The former Marseille man is considered the divisive figure in Arsenal history, and that was made all the more clear after he made his £25 million move to Manchester City, and then when the two clubs would play each other, he got pelted with booze. Though his performances in the 2010-2011 season were enough to attract somebody like Man City, overall, his appearances in a red shirt, well, they were kind of up and down. For the first two seasons, he struggled to replicate the form that had made Arsenal interested in the first place, so much so, he didn't make the France 2010 World Cup squad. Given how he is now perceived by Arsenal fans and all the trophies he won at Manchester City, he probably would have preferred just skipping the Emirates altogether. Number five, Francis Jeffers. Francis Jeffers had it good at Everton. Not only was he scoring loads of goals, but he was absolutely adored by the Blue Faithful. However, when Arsenal did come in to sign him, Jeffers was like, sweet. 
Let's go to London. Arsene Wenger and Arsenal fans were so confident that Jeffers could fill the void left by goal poacher Ian Wright, they spent £10 million on him, which was huge back in 2001. That was ridiculous. Sadly, Jeffers never lived up to his promise. And when I say he didn't live up to his promise, he only scored four goals between 2001 and 2004. Injury and poor form meant he was eventually left out of the team in favour of the likes of Thierry Henry and Sylvain Wiltord, and he had nothing to do with the FA Cup winning sides of 2002 and 2003. An incredible frustrated Jeffers made his final appearance for Arsenal in the 2003 Community Shield, where he came on as a substitute, and then he got sent off. He never again looked like the player that Arsenal had spent all that money on, and he finished up his career playing for Action Stanley in 2013. Number four, Richard Wright. If the aforementioned Francis Jeffers wasn't enough to convince Arsene Wenger that he should start buying players abroad rather than focus on English talent, goalkeeper Richard Wright probably sealed that deal, especially because at one point he was called the perfect replacement for David Seaman. Paying £6 million for him in his 22 appearances for Arsenal, it became quite clear quite quickly that he was very inconsistent because at one moment he'd make these terrific saves you couldn't believe and the next he was punching the ball into his own net. Before long, Wright had slipped a third place in the pecking order and given that no one was happy, he was shipped out to Everton where there, once more, poor form and injuries saw him crashing out the first team. Nevertheless, Wright kept plugging away and he did actually have a very good time when he went back to Whipswich, so much so that he got signed to Manchester City. And in the four seasons he spent there, he played a grand total of zero times. Number three, Clive Allen. No one could have predicted just how weird Clive Allen's time at Arsenal was going to be. The North London club paid QPR an incredible £1.25 million back in 1980, but would ultimately then release him after just three pre-season games. Without ever competing in a competitive match, Allen was then passed across to Crystal Palace and in turn Kenny Sampson went the other way. This episode was extremely embarrassing for the forward and probably the low point of his entire career because the rest of it was actually pretty damn good. And it's said that all this happened because QPR refused to directly sell to Crystal Palace so we have to go through this rigmarole with Arsenal being some weird third party and if that is true, it's absolutely ridiculous it didn't help anybody. Number two, Andrea Sharvin. When a Sharvin made the move to Arsenal from Zenit St. Petersburg, he promised the world, but really in hindsight, delivered very little. The £15 million winger did have an incredible start to his Arsenal career because with only 10 appearances, he scored six times and he had five assists. And despite only being there for half of his debut season, he came in second in the Player of the Year awards, getting a pretty damn good 20% of the vote. After all this though, things did indeed start to go downhill and it became pretty clear pretty quickly that Sharvin just didn't really want to play for Arsenal Football Club anymore, given his negative body language and the fact he was clearly disinterested. The player lacked motivation and he gradually got more interested in outside of football pursuits, such as his fashion range. You could say his best years were wasted on the Arsenal bench, something as Sharvin himself has talked about, and he said when he was there, he felt quite depressed as he wanted to be involved. Now 37, as Sharvin is seeing out the final days of his footballing career in Kazakhstan. Number one, Jose Antonio Reyes. There is no doubt that Reyes deeply regretted his move to Arsenal Football Club. I mean, in 2005, he got pranked by a hoax phone call and he even told those people on the phone he wanted to see the back of Arsenal as quickly as humanly possible. He went on to say that London wasn't what he was expecting and also that a lot of Arsenal players and staff were bad people. Quite clearly a lot had changed since the Spain forward had signed with Arsenal in the 2003-2004 transfer window for 17 million big ones. And buying Reyes was very much a statement of intent from Arsene Wenger who wanted to prove he could still splash the cash especially as he was trying to compete with Chelsea. And that worked brilliantly when Reyes scored a brace to knock out the Blues from the FA Cup, but from there, it was like a car tumbling off a cliff. After only two and a half seasons, Reyes was indeed sold to Real Madrid, and now he plies his trade in China. And that is that. Know of any other players that probably regret joining Arsenal? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Then make sure you head over to whatculture.com and read yourself some articles, and follow What Culture on Twitter at what culture FC. My name is Simon from What Culture, and for all my sins, I am an Arsenal fan. But let's see what happens in the next season.